Classical music divides quite neatly into five periods, each one a reaction against the previous. As so often when dealing with culture, our story begins in the Renaissance. Out from the monasteries and churches, and also the taverns, comes a new sound. The major key had finally been discovered by Western music. Now, for the first time, names other than Anonymous emerge from the murk of history. Individual composers exploring this new sonic landscape. Innovations in crafting a metalwork add instruments to what had previously been mostly vocal music. And yet, this is the wild west of classical music, a place of stunning beauty and lawless harmony. Masters of the age of Palestrina and then Monteverdi, who practically invents opera, as well as plenty more. All that harmonic exploration changes with the Baroque age, which codifies new rules of harmony and tuning. Now instruments can play together in 24 keys, 12 major and 12 minor, at the same time. Composers discover if they double up a violin, they produce a rounder sound. Musical ensembles grow. The orchestra becomes a thing. This is a prolific age, an outpouring of music of unmatched energy, lapped up by a new audience. For this was now the age of public concerts, as much as the private pleasures of kings and princes. This is the world of Vivaldi, Handel, and of course, J.S. Bach. This is the age of the big wigs. Tastes change once more. Where Baroque music delighted in complexity and detail, the new classical style emerges like a spring clean. Wig sizes shrink. Musical instruments are decluttered. Harmony is simplified with the dominance of the perfect fifth. And melody takes centre stage as complex forms like the fugue are cleaned out in an organisation of music into established genres and forms like the Alberti bass the string quartet, the symphony orchestra, and the sonata form. Music is now nourishment for the mind. This is, after all, the Enlightenment. This is the age of Haydn and Mozart. This is the classical large C age of classic small c classical small c music. But fashions change once more, and that eternal need not to sound like dad's music meant yet another revolution. Romantic music emerges into the 19th century. If the classical age appealed to the head, The Romantic Age appeals to the heart. Composers start to struggle against the forms and genres of music established in the Classical Age. A struggle you can hear in the music of the legend that straddles these two periods. Beethoven's music still obeys the classical forms, but pushes them to the limit. Quartets with seven movements, enlarged orchestras, symphonies with singers. Everything's getting bigger, longer, louder. The Romantic Age emerges with the smell of gunpowder in the air. This is the age of revolution and new nationalism. Composers mine their native folk music for inspiration. Dvorak the Czech, Mussorgsky the Russian, Grieg the Norwegian. Dvorak moves to America and culturally appropriates very appropriately. The age fully emerges with the composers Richard Wagner and Johann Brahms. There's a silly argument between the supporters of these giants. It's an argument that looks ridiculous with the hindsight of history. The music of Brahms and Wagner sound much more similar than the music of well, the music of what's about to come. <laughs> Welcome to the roller coaster of history that is the 20th century. However you date it, philosophy, science, cubism, World War I, there is a total new perspective that begins with this new century. In music, the harmonic system isn't just challenged, the movement known as atonalism attempts to destroy it altogether. Which, if you ask me, honestly didn't need destroying. Russian composers are on fire in the 20th century, as much as their homeland often seems to be. Stravinsky, Prokofiev and Shostakovich offer a discordant tone without going full atonal, although Stravinsky has a go. These composers produce the soundtrack of the first half of the 20th century, a derelict landscape full of death and bereft of a god. Over in America, things are much more optimistic. With Irving Berlin, Cole Porter and George Gershwin revitalising the song and helping deliver a new form of opera. The musical. Life is all right in America. If you're all white right in America. So, there you go. Five periods, each of which reacts against the previous to offer vastly different sonic landscapes and unending pleasure for our ears. Please like and subscribe.